versus Mad Lions, of course, the rebranded yeah. Splice. A lot of new players, a lot of new faces. One in particular is in the top lane. We have seen Arome before. We have. He has subbed in for Splice in the past, but I'm excited to see how he will stack up against the likes of Wonder, a player that didn't have the strongest 2019, but still considered one of the best top laners that we have here in Europe. Yeah, I think a lot of people still put him in the top three or so. We'll see how the two teams develop on the rip, because we are about to get on into picks and bans straight away here. Now, of course, Season 10 has rung in the changes. We've seen changes to Summoner's Rift. We've seen nerfs, we've seen picks. Aphelios is in, Diana's rework is there as well. And immediately, G2 are going to ban away the Aurelia and Akali taken away by Mad Lions. Yeah, no surprise with the Akali. For those unaware, Akali is considered S++ tier right now by the pro players. She is far too strong. She goes into every single matchup. We're expecting her to be perma-banned. The Yasuo ban still coming out towards G2 Esports. This has been a long time ban domestically yep. against this team because of how easily they flex it. And you can see from G2 Esports, quite a couple of interesting bans coming out that we did not see a lot of last year. Aurelia, quite a surprising ban. Wasn't expecting that one, but Rumble is something that has been risen in priority. We've been seeing a lot over in the LPL and over in the Kesper Cup as well. And Pantheon yeah. being taken off the board. Betty, Betty, Aphelios is open. Aphelios is open. I just, I had to figure So is Senna as banned. well. Senna's a bit. Kiana's there. We saw that almost perma banned in the Kesper Cup. So, so many powerful picks already. Kiana lock. There's Aphelios. Bring it on! I'm not going to get any Are of the you abilities ready? <laughs> right, but it's going to be great fun to watch alongside the Lee Sin for Mad Lion. These lock-ins are coming in fast and furious for both teams. They clearly know what they want. And right now, G2, they've gone for a very aggressive comp. This looks like going to be a Kiana in the mid lane. Of course, it can be flexed up towards the top side of the map as well. Senna going to be playing up against the Aphelios in the bot lane. Yet to know where she's going to go can, of course, be flexed between the AD carry position and the support position, but we are expecting it to be in yeah. that AD role based on what a lot of pros have been telling us behind the scenes. Totally agree with you there, Vedius. Now on the side of Mad Lions, we've got the Aphelios, the Lee Sin, Mordecai's at the final lock. Mordecai's is still an S-tier pick across the board, you have to think. Usually played up towards the top lane, maybe slightly weaker than Akali, but Akali is kind of just the strongest pick anywhere. We have also been seeing a fair amount of Mordecai's in the mid lane over yep. in the LPL as well, so a lot of flex options right now. Um, now we're moving into the second half of the ban phase, and no supports have been prioritized or banned away for the time being. Leona is up and available. The Norlus is up. Many solo queue players have been complaining about how they just straight up solo carry your uh, AD uh, champion. So surprised we haven't seen much priority on that. But when you are running things like a Senna, typically you'd run a more defensive support, something like the Braum, even the Tom Kench, to try and provide more peel and defensive tools. But it looks like the first support being banned away is actually this Rakan, taken away from the uh, very well-known Mickey. Yeah, Mickey, very good on that, Rakan. And of course, the thing we haven't talked about too much, but the analyst test did talk about previously, Caps in that bot lane role will be piloting the center in this game, we assume. Interesting to see how he teams up with the Mickey through the... Uh, with the Mickey? With just Mickey through the course of the game. But right now, Mad Lions are looking perhaps towards picking another flexible champion. Instead, they're just going through everything. I'm going to stop talking about that for the <laughs> moment. The Braum is locked in, so we won't see the center Braum bot lane. Instead, it will be Kaiser picking up the Braum for Mad Lions. Now, I am wondering if G2 will go for a range support here, go for something a little more aggressive to try yeah. and bully the Braum out of lane. The great thing about Senna is 600 range champion can be very oppressive during the Only gets more stages. as the game goes on as exactly well. Exactly that, Medic. So I wonder if G2 will go for a strong 2v2 lane and then look to play through Caps and Mickey, or whether they'll go for a Tom Kent, something that we see a lot of during the Casper Cup. Uh, we will wait and see. It's going to be the final pick for support. Aatrox was locked in for G2. That's going up towards top, we expect. Perks will be piloting the Kiana in the mid lane. Yankos on Elise in the jungle. And finally, Mickey looking to see which of his many supports he wants. That range hover. support There's is the possible. Hover. As you said, Zyra pretty strong at the moment, but maybe go back to the tanks. Nautilus, a very powerful bot lane pick. One of the two S tier supports, and it will be locked in for Mickey. Well, I was hopeful. I was hopeful that we would get to see a little bit more of... Uh, Experimentation. Yeah, but I think what they were lacking was that form of engage, a way to start off the fights. So now that they have the Nautilus, they have a they have good follow with the likes of the uh, Kiana ultimate, and they have the Elise Cocoon to follow up as well. So I think that now with the Nautilus in there, they have good engage tools to actually uh, start fights. And speaking of engage, uh, Mad Lions are going to round their comp out with the Orn. 
very strong tool. We've been hearing a lot of pros talk about how right now it's one of the safer top side picks because of how well it does in too many matchups, how it can offer that great late game engage. Uh, and we saw when we only have to look back to the fifth game between G2 and Fnatic in the finals in Athens, where that one almost won the game for Fnatic with some of the great engages that it was able to find. We'll see if Mad Lions can utilize it to the same effect Fnatic could back then. And of course, Orn can get better or worse depending on what type of summoner's rift you have with the map changing as the dragons fall. I want to have a look more holistically at these compositions, Vedius. We've talked about the intricacies of each individual matchup, but when you look at these two teams, what do you feel they're trying to do? Well, what we're seeing a lot right now in the current meta is very aggressive junglers. The camps spawn very quickly, which means that it's just more efficient for junglers to just try and kill things right now. Be, do as much as you can in the early game and then give your jungle to your laners. They just want to try and make things as much happen as early as possible. So I'm expecting aggression. I'm expecting the junglers to be the main focus point as we're going to be jumping into game very soon. I think we are just about ready to hand it over to an interview with Mac behind the stage. Do you look into camera the whole time? Oh, we've been waiting for a second before we get there. And we'll be ready in just a second. You see Caps' dad there. Now Mac is ready behind stage. Mac, you are in charge of this new lineup. So tell me about your debut drafting behind them. Um, honestly, this team is really easy to draft with. I think we have really flexible players. They're all really able to play any role. None of them have any ego. So they're a super nice group to coach in general, and especially to draft with. How do you expect they're going to match against this new version of Worlds finalists today, uh, especially on first game? I, I think they'll be fine. I mean, these players have a lot of inherent confidence, I think. Um, they're a really, really great bunch. I couldn't be happier with the roster we have. I'm really confident in all of the scouting that we did over the offseason, uh, and I'm confident that they're going to be true to themselves and be confident and be aggressive on stage today, which is what I want them to do against G2. I'm really looking forward to seeing that. Thank you very much, Mac. Back Thank to you, you guys and the Rift. Thank you very much, Mac and Lore. The aggressive style of Mad Lions coming out of the gate roaring, you might say. Very different to Splice in the past. And I wonder if we'll see that a little bit from this Mad Lions bot lane, because Aphelios has been a champion on the fingertips of every AD carry in the offseason. I think anybody that has played any League of Legends over the last few months will have experienced some Aphelios and some Senna. Uh, many fans were expecting Aphelios to be permabanned, but He's already in our first game of the LEC. And one of the powerful things about Aphelios is his diversity. He has a weapon for every occasion. He has harass tools, he it's has greedy, life really, steal, he has crowd control, he has damage. He like, can beat a bruiser in a 1v1. He one. can do it all. But of course, he is gated by the fact that he can't have access to all of these weapons at once. It looks like man are going for a bit of an invade onto the enemy red buff, which they should be able to steal away, but this is fine for Yankos. He's going to start on his top side jungle. And something that we'll see a lot of from our junglers is Interestingly, they'll start on mainly clearing one side of the map because of the jungle experience changes, but we'll get back to that in a second. With regards to Aphelios, in the early laning phase against the Senna, I actually feel like he can struggle quite a lot. He's outranged. Uh, of course, there is the Calibrum that will help mitigate some of that, but Nautilus has a lot more tools to be aggressive in the early game. Uh, compared to what the Braum is capable of. Remember, Braum, very much more of a defensive support there to provide peel and safety for the Aphelios, who later into the game will have to try and avoid the Elise and the Kiana and the Aatrox all looking to dive on top of his face. So I expect Caps and Mickey to have early pressure in this bot, two versus two, um, and it's something that Kazi and Kaiser will have to play around, and by going for that early invade, it incentivizes less the Elise to pass towards bot. But of course, with Shadow securing both red buffs right now, it means that they have full information of where Yankos is, and he's not going to be able to uh, secure himself a red buff in the early game. You can see Humanoid already pathing to the bottom side of the lane, knowing that Yankos was up there. Yankos will have a zombie ward as he cleared that out. Early sweeper from the Elise jungle. Not always seen, but can do very well if you want these early ganks. We talked about junglers trying to get a lot of ganks off in the early game to see if they can get themselves and their teammates snowballing. Now, of course, Yankos, while he's not able to steal away the red buff, he saw Shadow walk across the mid lane, so he knew what Shadow was up to. He has pressure in the bot side, and they should look to rotate up, but they're actually going to stay in the two versus two for now. Oh, the smite comes down. Yankos is the one to secure it. Lands the cocoon, and Shadow has to run away for the moment. Should be fine just to escape, but great smite there from Yankos. Bad flash, though. Uh, not quite oh, wait, sure. did he flash? Yeah, he flashed as well. Okay. Um, 
I'm to be honest, didn't see that. I can only assume that he did it because he wanted to get behind the blue to then land a cocoon. Sure. Um, but maybe he's rusty. Maybe I'm not entirely sure. Uh, if we get a replay, if we get a look back, then we can talk about it. But uh, yes, Yankos not going to have his flash available. Does successfully secure the blue buff though. He does. Shadowed that. Now has uh, shadowed his. Oh, okay. I'm going to mess that one up <laughs> a few times this right there, <laughs> Shadow is standing near his bottom lane to make sure that uh, Jankos didn't go for a gank down there. At the moment, odds even in that bottom side. of Felios and Senna on equal CS. I expect uh, not too much to happen without the jungler intervention. And Jankos is up towards top. Wonder has been beating out Arome. He's about 15 CS up, but not going to be able to get too much more out of it. And that. Lead in farm is equating to a bit of a CS lead towards uh, a bit of a gold lead towards G2 as well. Yeah, so I look back, blue buff definitely died, he just flashed. <laughs> I don't know. That's, like isn't that, that's how you, st you stamp your thoughts on the rift. He's nervous, you know? you know, new player to the rift. Yeah, yeah. not that experience. He's not known for his elite <laughs> player, <or> anything, <laughs> you know. In any case, still very even for the time being. You can see that G2 is starting to build a bit of a CS discrepancy. That's largely coming from the top lane. Yep. We briefly mentioned Arome up in the top side. He's not in a super favorable matchup in the early game, so he's going to fall behind a bit as we see some trading in the bot lane. He can't suppose he's going to land here. Mickey does pop the Titan's Wrath, that shield on the Nautilus, keeping him pretty healthy. It is one of the reasons the Nautilus is so good at trading. If you go in, even if you're out of position, you can just pop your shield, and you don't really take too much damage. But with the way pushing in, Kazi. Brings out the flamethrower and burns through the minions pretty easily. So Caps is going to use this opportunity to go back to base, utilize his teleport and come back to lane with a pickaxe. So he's going to have an item advantage and this gives G2 an opportunity to look for a play. Mickey going in with the hook once again. The unbreakable shield has been put up by Kaiser, but the last in base will lock him in place. And for the time being, both Kazi and Kaiser should be able to get away. You can see that Glacial Augment doing a lot of work on Caps. It's very hard to escape a center. Exactly that. And I'm glad that we were able to highlight Caps' going for that early base because you can see what he was able to do with that item advantage over Kazi and Kaiser. No summoner spells were burnt, but by getting an early pickaxe, it gives him a lot of extra attack damage very early on. When you combine that with the Glacial Augment, it becomes very difficult to escape targets. She uses her Q, it helps apply on hit effects, you then hit them with the auto, and it's just slow after slow, yeah. and you just can't get away. And then that easily sets up for her to land her W, and then you're set up for death. Yeah, especially when you have a Nautilus there as well, even if you get away from some of the slow, the follow-up slow is coming in. Uh, Perks has just hit level six. We'll have that Kian ultimate, which can be incredibly impactful, but both Shadow and Kaiser are standing in this mid lane. Now, Humanoid has that ult if he wants to lock Perks in the Realm of Death. Yankos and Mickey are matching, though. Both of them arriving into the mid lane. Want to be in a position to provide security for Perks, but it looks like he's not going to need it. And when, we were, when I was researching Shadow and when I was talking to some of the Mad Lions coaching staff, they talked about how aggressive he was as a jungler, how much he liked to get in early plays and get in these early skirmishes. We've seen a little bit against Jankos in that blue buff, but so far Shadow hasn't really found an avenue into these lanes. He doesn't really have a lot of options. Uh, once Kaiser hits level 6, then maybe they have some ability to set up a play, but for the time being, when you're playing with a Mordekaiser, when you're playing with an Orn, uh, there aren't a lot of early game options available to you. So it doesn't surprise me that he hasn't been able to make anything successful happen just yet, and largely why G2 have been able to build this slight advantage in the early game. You can see they're about 600 gold ahead at seven minute mark. Deathgrass will pull perks back, but just pops one of those corrupting potion stacks, and he'll be all okay. Now, Yankos has snuck down in towards this bottom lane. He's gonna use the sweeper, and did walk over a ward originally that they cleared, so not too surprising for Mad Lions that they just decide to back away. And now we'll see Mickey and Yankos teaming up once again. The jungle support, Stepping in, trying to get some vision down is something we've seen for the last few years of League of Legends. Also something Mickey and Yankos did a lot of last year. Arome struggling once again under the pressure, but now Shadow sees his opportunity. Call of the Forge God. Wonder flashes away from it, and now Wonder perhaps looking to dive the towers. Pop the world ender, but the ignite is ticking. Arome flashes in, lands the brittle, and there is the first kill of the decade in the LEC. There's the second! Mad Lions ripping through G2. They find two quick kills. Yankos wants to try and answer back, though. Yankos coming in, but Kazi, look at the damage you get! The crescendo just shipping, shredding through caps. Yankos coming in with the cocoon, but Kaiser is there to body block. Yankos gonna try and get away, but he can't escape. 3-0 Mad Lions! And this is a perfect early game for Mad. Just as the game was going slowly, no action all of a sudden. 
sudden, three kills explode onto the Rift, and you can see some of the power of Aphelios, utilizing that crescendo to perfection in order to get himself the DPS he needed to shut down Mickey and get first blood and first kills onto G2. And we did, I think we all wondered whether G2 with this experimentation, when we talked to Perks and Caps backstage, they were saying they're trying stuff out in the spring split, whether it would cost them early on in the split. And I think you see a little bit of that there, Mad Lions acting well to get those kills, but you wonder if G2 are just a little bit sloppy at times. Well, I think one of the things we need to criticize was Wonder was playing like he had a jungler when yeah. he didn't. He needed to have that wave pushed in, or maybe he was over-aggressing in order to get that wave underneath the tower so he could then back off, because it looked like to me that Yankos was uh, investing towards the Drake on the bot side. And if we have a look at the minimap, you can see Elise is being pinged. Mad know where um, the Elise is, which means that Shadow can easily make this gank without risk of being counter gank. Wonder burns his flash, the dodge the ultimate. The ultimate from Senna does not come through. Meanwhile, Mickey just oversteps. He gets chased down by Kazi and Kaiser, and because he had the Crescendum, and one of the great things about Severum is how quickly it can stack up the Chakrams on your Crescendum as well. So you pop that Q, you get a bunch of Shurikens available to you, yep. and then you just run your opponent down. Remember, the closer you are, the more Chakrams you get coming back to you as well. So well played by the Mad Duo. They're able to find two kills. They're even able to get that kill onto the jungler, but now G2 on revenge. One more, there's a concussive blow, look at the damage coming out of the Glacial Fisher! Get a Felios! Just get a Felios! That okay. was the perfect combination of the Crescendum turret with the Calibrum this time round. So, the thing about the turret is it applies the effects of your offhand, which means that he had full range. Yep. That meant that the turret hit Mickey two or three times. This gave him a max range Crescendum auto, but the action's not over yet, man. Wonder doesn't have flash. He's going to be knocked up against the wall. The alcove kicks him back, and Shadow should be able to secure the kill pretty easily here. It's 5-0 to Mad Lions. We're only 10 minutes in. A 2k gold advantage in the back pockets of Mad. These young players, a lot of rookie players, challenge challenging the current European champion. And it was only three minutes ago I said, our oh, Mad Lions haven't been able to find the ganks. They haven't been able to find this aggressive playstyle that we heard about from Mac backstage, but already they've five kills now. They've got the Cloud Drake to kick us off. They're looking for the first Rift Herald of the game as well. You can see the Essence Reaver now being picked up for Kazi as well. Really big first item pickup. Once he completes the Rune and Hurricane, you're going to see some crazy interactions with all of his different guns, and they're utilizing this early pressure to secure themselves the Rift Herald. We can also see that Kazi has moved up towards the top side. They can use this Rift Herald as well to put more gold into the pocket of Kazi if they want to. And it looks like that that's exactly what they're yep. going to do. Wonder left in this three versus one. G2 kind of on the back foot respond. I mean, although the first Rift Herald does less damage than the second, this tower is still going to get chunked out quite a lot by this charge. And if Wonder stays around for too long, he might be in for a world of hurt. Two more plates down. That's four already in the top lane. Four Mad Lions. Caps and uh, Mickey were on their way up, but Mad Lions don't overstay. They take the, what they can get. They back away. And because of it, they now have a 2,800 gold lead, Vedius. Now, I feel like given the, the nature of the current game, when you see a lot of Senna and Kazi, uh, Senna and Kazi. Senna and Kazi, yeah. Senna and Aphelios, uh, both AD carries scale very well. So if one of them gets an advantage, obviously you're already putting them in a much more favorable position. The junglers fall off very hard in the mid game, especially depending on how much of an impact they've had. And you can already see Shadow sitting with a level advantage over Yankos, which is going to be difficult to close because of the changes to jungle experience. Catch up XP is no longer a thing. You now just get flat experience from all of the caps. Obviously, as the game progresses, they give you more and more XP, yeah. but because you have the higher level and because you have an advantage, it gets harder to farm because you're going to be challenged more and everything is going in the favor of Mad right now. They have a, a level advantage between the two top laners, a level advantage between the two mid laners. And so far, this early game has gone extremely well for Mad when it was G2 who had the priority yeah. in lanes. It was the Aatrox that they could have looked to play around. It was the Senna and the um, Nautilus that they could have looked to try to take advantage of, but they couldn't get an early Drake. The best they did was able to steal an early blue buff, but outside of that, it's been mad just punishing these very small oversteps that we're seeing from G2. And when four of the top five gold scores in the game all belong to one team, you know you are suffering here as G2. Next dragon on the cards is an ocean in a minute and a half. That means we'll either have an infernal rift or a mountain rift. I know which one of the two I prefer. Infernal is a lot more fun, I've got to say. 
Mountain doesn't give you, you know, that extra burn damage if you collect the soul. So. And I will say that uh, Mountain could be quite good for Mad as well because it does give you bonus resistances. Yep. And that shield that you do get, I do think it's the weakest soul of all four of them. But still, when you have... Uh, Champions like an Orn and a Braum that benefit a lot from tanky stats, you then make them tankier and you put a shield on top of them, that front line becomes almost impossible to get through. It looks like G2 have given up the ghost really on this top lane tower. They're playing with three people down towards that bottom lane. Perks and Yankos trying to double up and see if they could get a gank onto Arome, but Arome, one of the few Mad Lions players with experience on the LEC stage. However, here comes Perks trying to catch our Humanoid. That's Grass going to pull him back. In the realm of death right now, Perks flashes away. Humanoid looking to get away as well, but the cocoon's gonna land onto Shadow on towards the top side. Humanoid low down towards the bottom. Shadow able to get away. Humanoid should be done for, healing up for an absolute massive amount of health. But in the end, Caps gets G2's first kill of the LEC in 2020. So G2 finally find a pick onto Humanoid. He did have his flash, but he didn't see the point in using it, given that Yankos was covering the river as well. Almost gets the kill onto Perks, yeah. forced to burn both of his summoner spells, showcasing some of the power that Mordekaiser does have. But you can see in this situation, Humanoid thinks he's safe because Shadow is there, but he's not. There are four members of G2 collapsing. He is standing there, overextending, trying to clear this control ward, which he's very quickly punished for. And it was a little unfortunate, the synergy between Mickey and Perks. Yeah. Mickey actually pulls him out of the ultimate from Perks. Uh, you can see that jungle, oh sorry, support mid duo, perhaps not building that same synergy yeah, that they had the in the bot lane. When they were both in bot lane together, they were able to do it quite well, but We'll see now whether that first kill holds a few more for G2 or whether Mad Lions can keep up the tempo, keep up the pace of this game because that Ocean Dragon is now on the rift and they have great team fighting tools. You look at it, you've got an Orn, you've got a Felios, you've got the Lee Sing kick. Very good at disrupting these fights and Mad Lions Infernal. will take the second dragon of the game. And as you say, it is an Infernal Rift that is on its way for us here at Betty. As you can see it blazing its way up and uh, Oh, look at the top lane. We see a bit of action yeah, happening. The flash going. is going to be used by Humanoid. Humanoid's just caught under the tower. Dawning Shadow comes out. There's nothing you can do about that. G2 with a good reaction play, knowing that Mad Lions were down towards the bottom side. They need to be proactive to get back into this game. Of course, Mad not slowing down. They will answer by pushing in the mid tower and the bot. Here comes Wonder oh, on the play. Wonder's on the side, but Kazi flashes forward. Now this is where you see the power of Aphelios. Still doing damage. Wonder manages to try him down and gets away. Kaiser. Should be able to dodge back towards Shadow here. Well played by Wonder to get out of that one alive. Good flank from Wonder, doing what he can to uh, make up for the early deficit that he generated for G2. And they keep their mid tower alive. They'll get a bit more gold onto Perks. They'll get a big shutdown onto Kazi, burn both of his summoner spells, and they'll relieve some of the pressure that Matt has been putting down in this early game. And you can see Shadow, this is just way too far forward. Dev Shot's gonna connect, and Yankos actually kicked that great flash from Shadow. But Romain's gonna open up with the Call of Forge God, and now Mickey trying to get away. Kaiser's still stepping forward, they're gonna knock him up. There's the concussive blows for a successive stun, and Shadow is on a killing spree. So Mad are able to turn that pick around. Should have been Shadow losing his life, but Yankos doesn't quite have the damage to get the execute onto Shadow, hasn't yet spent his gold which means that he's able to get away with his life and Mad even turn it around into a kill. We expected a bit of a bloodthirsty early game there. Oh, I'm so there. happy, Vedius. I was so expecting happy. it more to come from the junglers, but it's actually come from a lot from the laners, especially yeah. down the bot side of the map, and of course Shadow finding some successful ganks up towards the top side. We're going to have another look back at this replay. Shadow, as you mentioned, Medic, very overextended. He thinks he has full control over this bot side of the map because, hey, I just saw Aatrox reset. Hey, I have a bot wave pushing in. I should be fine. And if it wasn't for Kaiser and Arome coming in yeah. to save the day, he may well have lost his life. So great stuff there from the support and top laner to be able to offer that assistance. But definitely a dangerous play for Shadow to me. But you can see as well the Mad Lion CC chain. If you do get caught out by yourself as a G2 player, you're going to have the Call of the Forge God knocking you up. You're then going to have the uh, Arome charging in if you are against a bit of uh, bit of terrain. And you have the Concussive Blows coming out from the Orns. So it's very hard to get away if you are ever out of place. Now, let's have a quick look across where these two teams are in terms of items. Manamune and Dustblade complete on caps. The Essence Reaver building in towards the Infinity, as you would assume, on Kazi with that BF Sword and Pickaxe. But Mad Lions, oh, this is the second Rift Hell. They're going for that. For some reason, I thought Baron was up, but of course it's not. It's only 18 minutes in. Second Rift Herald of the game, perhaps going to go across to Shadow. Yeah, man, it happens. Don't worry. Shadow, though, is solo doing this. Pokes is going to spot him out. Shadow jumps across the wall, manages to escape, can jump back in. There's the Sonic Wave. 
Now Chris is around the corner. Kaiser is just trying to act as a bouncer. Yankos gets it in the smite fight, then goes up in the repel. Jumps onto Shadow, but Yankos is double flashes to make sure he picks up the Rift Held and he will be able to use that as soon as he respawns. So, I think this is a pretty worthwhile trade for G2 overall. Yes, it does cost Yankos his flash, but they can use that Rift Held to set up for a mid lane tower because they're going to secure the bot lane tower. I feel like G2 Siege, not the strongest. They have a melee mid laner and they have an AD carry that has a set attack speed. Yep. While her range is long, she doesn't take objectives very quickly. And I also feel that when you enter the mid game, she kind of enters this weak state where yep. she doesn't, she's kind of, she kind of like the Caitlyn of old, you know, where she kind of sits in this weird spot where she, she's not super strong, but she's also not super weak either. On two items, I feel Aphelios is much stronger. You can see that he's now completed the Infinity Edge. So G2 want to be careful about how they play this mid game because going for team fights right now, probably not the best thing for them. They should look for picks, look for opportunities to catch Mad out and utilize the mobility of this Elise and the Kiana to catch your opposition when they least expect it. And picks always come from vision. You can see G2 have littered wards around that top side river. They're trying to get some down towards this bottom side as well. Rome currently level 12 on his way to level 13. And of course he will be able to upgrade that infinity edge into a molten edge at level 13, which makes Kai Kazi even stronger in those mid game fights. 30 second on the Inferno. You have to think Mad Lions will want to go for it. Now, one of the uh, cool things about the Infernum, uh, Infernum, Infernal Drakes, uh, and when it opens up a lot more of the map, it makes it easier to contest objectives because there's just less terrain. Makes oh. it a lot. Oh, Perk Perk flashes in, gets a double knock, but Carlton's wow. done! It was a little bit of a stutter step there by Perk, but he was able to get the kill, and here comes Wonder from the side. Humanoid in the realm of death will be done for pretty soon. Perk secures it. G2 strike back in the mid lane. Perk showcasing that he still knows how to play mid lane. He can still play these assassin champions, and he finds a good pick there onto uh, Kazi. He still did not have his flash from that earlier play. Remember when the flank happened from yep. Wonder due to the unavailable flash that made that play happen? And G2 have now been able to claw this gold difference back in their favor. They can now rotate back down, go for the Infernal, and Infernals are the only drink that's going to spawn now, Medic. Yep. That means that if G2 secured the next four, they're going to get a pretty hefty damage buff uh, on top of potentially the Infernal Dragon Soul. Of course, Infernal giving you percentage AD and AP. Mad Lion's going to try and contest this. The Dragon does go down. Here comes the Call of the Forge God. Looking for Yankos down towards the bottom side. Caps is there as well. Shadow has the flank. It's a 3v4 at the moment, but here is Humanoid. Teleported in. Rips back Mickey into the middle of the fight. And Yankos and Caps are running for the hills up towards the top. A kill over to, to the Valios. It's a Valios and he's, <laughs> he's gone. He's not there anymore. Caps flashes across the walls to get away from Arome. But the Sonic Wave connects and you have to feel Shadow will be on the chase as soon as he has. Just that little bit more energy, but there's the last embrace. Ooh, and nice side step. Them up, dodges away from the Glacial Fisher, and Mad Lions will give up the chase now. Well, props to Caps being able to get out of that situation. I, I thought he was done, but he ends up surviving. Here we oh, see Perks. Perks. He's got stealth. He's going to grab the grass as well. So he is able to get away. G2 have been able to close that gold gap that was developing here, Vedius. There's only about 200 gold between these two teams, and Wonder's trying to even out just a little bit more. The Infernal Chariots will pull back Humanoid. The Death Realm Who's is trapped there, in here with who, Medic? Mickey. And Wonder still on the chase. Neither of them really doing too much to the other, but there is the Dawning Shadow, and there goes Humanoid. Another kill to Wonder. He's got two on the board. And you're seeing some big mistakes from Humanoid. The only member of this squad that stuck around from last year to this year is the one that's consistently getting caught out. Let's look at this play from Perks. Flashes over, hesitates for a few seconds. Not sure why that happened, but regardless, still able to find the kill on Takazi. Big burst damage coming out from both Senna and Kiana. And they just blow him away. Humanoid then shortly follows, and they convert this very quickly into a big mid lane tower and an infernal drink. But Mad feel like they can chase this one down. They see G2 split up. They know that Kiana's top without teleport. They think that in this situation, with no ultimates available for G2 and a flanking humanoid, they can make this play happen. They managed to catch out Mickey, and you can see here, you know what Kazi's thinking. He's thinking free double, but Yankos lands the cocoon, and Kazi just gets melted. Gets absolutely melted. All right, Caps does have a two-level advantage over Kazi yes, now as well. Usually a level, we equate to about 600 gold worth of stats, so that's about a 1,000 gold lead just in terms of levels. So, 
that lull that I was talking about yeah. for Senna, gone now. She's no longer in the lull up. state. Yeah, the Mana Mune is now finished, and she is very, very strong. She also has a stopwatch available to her. Uh, often we do see... Ooh, might see another fight right now. Yeah, one step before. The Cusset blows two procs in. There's the third. Mickey coming from the side as well. Call of the Forge God comes out. It's going to land on Mickey and Caps. Maybe the chase is going to continue. Kazi with a Moonlight Vigil lands it from long range, but it's only the seven. He just gains health from that. Will be able to take out Mickey, but not able to chase any further. So it looked like G2 were the ones to initiate on that fight, but they initiated onto a brawl. You're seeing why this champion has risen in priority uh, in the current meta, and it's because he's a difficult champion to engage onto, Medic. You're a big support main, you know that if you're the one getting jumped on, you're like, yeah, I'm fine with this. I'm holding a big sure. shield, I can defend my team, and I feel like G2 got baited into an overextended fight there that ended up in the death of their support. There's just such good follow-up as well for Mad Lions with the call of the Forge God, with Kazi being able to chase people down, and Shadow has done a very good job of positioning in some of these fights as well. So let's actually watch Kazi here, and notice how he starts with the Q, he builds up Chakrams, and then he swaps over to the Crescendo and throws the turret down, and you can see how much space he's able to build. He puts the Braum in front of him, he plays very safe, and now he's built up all these Chakrams that he can use to run down targets, and he gets all this DPS from. So good awareness there from Kazi to utilize the combination that he had to, to get the damage that he needed. And this is the thing with Aphelios as well, it's how you play a fight is so dependent on which guns you have up, because you could have Calibrum up and then you're looking for the long range snipes on people, you could have Severum up and then you're looking for more of that lifesteal dodge in and out of the fight as we say. Herx here has the Edge of Night with that Dustblade com com uh, completed as well, building up his lethality, but Mad Lions as a five-man squad are all clumped up on this top side of the map. You can see Wonders down, but Orome does have teleport if he wants to match, but I'm not sure if he wins that 1v1 anymore. Well, I think Arome just wouldn't die. Okay. <laughs> I think he would just hold the matchup, but I don't think he needs to be there right now. They're more focused on trying to force a fight around Baron. They feel strong. Kazi has the upgraded Infinity Edge to the Molten Edge, and putting herself in this choke point against an Orn. Here we go. It's exactly what Mad wants. So Mickey gonna be the target to face check. Oh, they haven't even started Baron, but G2 don't know that. Now Perks has stepped forward, they will realize. Wonders walk down. Caps is the one to use his teleport. Not a massive deal for the side of G2. Caps has just completed his Yumu's Ghost Blade as well, so uh, okay. will have quite a lot more damage in this fight than he had previously. Remember, however, there is also the Infernal Drake about to spawn, and if Mad get it, they're setting that ticking clock on the fourth dragon of the game. It's the, uh, the soul of the dragon, very, very strong. Uh, even though Mountain, I consider one of the weaker ones, still very valuable to have. And it is Infernal in this game, so it's quite strong. It is the Infernal as well, so it gives you a lot of extra damage. Hit the fight from Perks. Pops the supreme display of talent, but only lands on Humanoid. And ninth, the fight is really going to begin. The Dawning Shadow coming out. There's the Call of the Forge God. Kaze, uh, Kaze and Kaiser fighting up towards the top side. Caps putting down a lot of damage. Last Embrace is not going to land. Perks still on the flank position. G2 trying to pinch them in on Mad Lions here. Trying to catch them like cats in a trap. A Humanoid going forward. The Infernal Chain is going to come out, but Yakus is already down. Kazi's gonna have the death charge on him. There was one down as well as Humanoid has fallen. 4v4, Wonder going forward. G2 have felt the pain of an Aatrox in this river before. And they're trying to put it down on Mad Lions. Perks jumping up to the back line. Kazi's still alive, but now he's shut down. It's Kaus to take it. He gets one, he gets two, and he's looking for more. Perks on the chase takes another, and G2 will wipe Mad Lions in the river. Fantastic patience from Perks. He was waiting for that moment to kill Kazi. He knows that with Kazi gone, the fight is G2's, and he does it beautifully. When we get the replay up, I just want to follow Perks and how he maneuvers around the fight, how he keeps Kazi distracted, because, again, he knows that if he takes the Aphelios out, then it's game, set, and match for G2. And now G2 just turn their eyes straight towards the Baron. Double Infernal in their pocket. This Baron won't go down too quickly. We talked about it earlier. Caps with that set auto attack speed isn't going to do it too quickly. And here's the TV. Humanoid hasn't had the best of games. Only did 500 damage in the last fight, but he's looking for Mickey. Jumps in. Death Realm onto Perks. Humanoid might just die straight away. He's got the shield down. Perks is taking down. The Baron has fallen. Humanoid's still looking for the kill. Gets one. That's one Baron down. Arome coming in as well. You can see Kazi's on the chase, but Arome runs away and G2 will escape. You have to feel here with four Baron buffs. We just want to disengage from this point. They're going to have to give up the blue, but that's fine. They walk away with a 4k gold lead and a Baron buff. G2 Esports showcasing 
that they're still very good at team fighting. And again, thank you, Observers. Focus here on perks. Use the ultimate early, doesn't land it on Takazi. But notice how he's just drawing the attention of the AD carries while the fight is happening on the other side. G2 is just buying time. They're just waiting. Perks keeping his distance. Mad know exactly where he is. But now look at how he's going to utilize his invisibility along with the uh, stun in order to try and lock down the AD carry. Kazi gets knocked up. He uses the heal early. This is the moment where he's waiting. Okay, the moment Kazi overextends, I'm going to go for the stun. Instant pop. With him out of the fight, that is immediate cleanup for the rest of G2. And just props to Perks. A lot of debate, a lot of questions around him coming back into the mid lane. And he showcases he's still very talented. He still understands what his role is, what he needs to do. And that is how you carry a team. And Cap's having a stellar game on the center as well. We wondered how his mechanical pr prowess would translate into the bottom lane role. Both in lane, Mickey perhaps overextended a couple of times, but as a bot lane through these mid-game fights, they've had great performance. And of course, Yankos on Elise, never going to have it again. Back to Braum duty, he goes. Sejuani or Braum? Sejuani or Braum. Definitely can't let him have these early game junglers. But in any case, G2 looking very strong right now. They, they fell behind early. They made a lot of big mistakes. They end up getting punished. Mad now starting to group up. They want to try and force fights. Faisal on the front line, pops the Unbreakable. Rome looking for the call of the Forge Guard. Doesn't land on anyone. Oh, oh the Shadow! Wonders on a rampage. Kazi trying to do what he can with the Moonlight Vigil. He shut down Wonder, but there's the stun from the side. Perks once again finds the flank. Orome chased out by Yankos. He sinks in his fangs and gets another kill. Humanoid comes out of the realm of death just to go back to the fountain. And G2 are just dismantling Mad Lions. The mid AD carry duo are doing some serious damage in these fights. Caps, his positioning is flawless. He's taking advantage of his range. He is one-shotting these carries, and there is little that Mad can do. They have put up a valiant fight. They have been able to find some great opportunities, and Kazi, I feel like he showcased a lot of great things yeah. in this first game, but what can you do when people are diving on top of you? Like, Braum got obliterated by this center ultimate before he could really offer much to his team, and now G2, they're on the Nexus. They're looking to end the game. Kaiser are trying to act as one final stand, but he's not going to be able to do too much. G2, G2, what are you going to do when they come for you? Well, right now it looks like Mad Lions are just crumbling underneath the pressure. 6,000 gold lead for G2. They take both the Nexus Towers, but they will not take the Nexus quite yet. Wow. Great stuff coming out from G2. Mad, they've done what they can. They're grouping up as a five because they recognize that they can't win on a side lane. They have to try and utilize that team fighting power, but the only way that's going to work is if you keep Kazi alive and in every single fight so far, G2 recognize, okay, kill Kazi, win the fight. And they've yep. been doing a great job of it every single fight. They really have. You have to feel it's just a matter of time before G2 can close this one out. A start to 2020 with winning ways, as expected from them after they had such a strong performance in 2019. Remember, back-to-back -back LEC champions, MSI champions, world's finalists. The only thing they didn't get was that championship in the end, but... Trying to start out a new decade with another win on the board. Wonder stepping forward, Arome going to get ripped back with it. Oh, actually uses the Bellas Breath to get away. Kaiser, though, still on the front line. Locked up with the last in breath. Mickey perhaps a little bit overextended here. He's going to fall first, but the Call of the Fortress coming out. Wonder pops the stop, wants to get away from it. Perhaps she too have delved a little bit too greedily. The last in brace will stun up Arome for the moment. And Mad Lions just able to defend their nexus, but... Not really much else. Yeah, definitely a greedy play from G2. Uh, Infernal is spawning in 15 seconds. Perks. <laughs> Not sure what he was looking for there. Um, Infernal is spawning in, well, 10 seconds now. And Baron is spawning in a minute and a half. And there are obviously two sideways that they could look to play around. G2 had all those options. Instead, they just ran it down mid and they tried to end the game. Right now, they have their eyes set on Shadow. And Shadow had his eyes set on the Grump. Good flash away. Dawning Shadow will not connect. Only the center part of that, of yep. course, does damage to your opponents. Uh, but an AD carry with a cross map ultimate is always an AD carry that has to be feared. And this will be the third Infernal, as you said, Vedius. After losing the first two Dragons, G2 have picked up every one since. And are just one away from that soul. They're just one away from the soul. And it's one of those things where there's a lot of debate right now around do you just give up the first two drakes yep. and then play for the next four? This is one of the advantages because you can just keep stacking up that Infernal Drake now because it's the only dragon that will spawn for the rest of the game. And they now have 12% additional attack damage and ability yep. power. Now, admittedly, it's a lot less than it used to be. Yeah, it used to be because they'd used have to 24%. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, you'd actually have 32. Um, no, because they have three. Yeah. So three times eight. 
It's 20. Oh, okay, okay. Your math is better than mine. <laughs> um, but what it would... Um, but it's the soul that they're after, yes. right? Of course, there is the fourth one that will help you a lot. That will put you up to 16%, but it's the soul where a lot of your additional damage comes from. And I don't think they need to wait for it. The Baron is going to be spawning in about 25 seconds. Uh, very rarely do you actually see, like, six drakes go down in a game. Uh, the big last hurrah for Mad will be, can they contest this... Um, this, this bank. And the thing is, you do have a four item Aphelios on your team. Like, oh, for he, sure, it's if possible. If he hits a Moonlight Vigil with Infernum on, people are going to get melted. This is going to get burned down. You've got the Call of the Forge God. You have Lee Sin jumping in and kicking people around. Humanoid doesn't really have too much damage yet, but now this is a great flank position. Kaiser's going to step forward for the Curse of the Black Mist, doing a lot of work here. Wonder trying to get in. Perks on the <laughs> He's gone. Goodbye. Wave goodbye to any hopes of winning this team fight as well, Mad Lions. Because you may have stuck together like a pride, but there was no pride in the way that fight went. G2 just shred through them once again. Yankos going to chase down a Rome. Rome, of course, has the exhaust from the unsealed spell, but, but Caps is on his way as well. Extra movement speed from that Curse of the Black Mist, and Arome is going nowhere. Both Perks and Wonder are pushing in the base. G2 looking for kills, as they always have done. And with the Nexus in their sights, G2 will record the first win of the LEC here in 2020. They had winning ways in 2019, and I'm sure they'll want to continue of it. And they had phantom the diving fight. ways last year as well. There aren't even the minions going to take this. In the end, Wonder secures it. G2, 1-0 in the LEC. Definitely not a clean game. You can see the head shaking from Grabs. He's uh, a little annoyed with his player's performance. Going down 0-5 within the first 10 minutes, not the way you want to start your split, but they did bounce back well. And you've got to give props to the way in which G2 team fought. Mad, I think, showcasing some of their inexperience as the game progressed. Once they had that advantage, uh, they did get caught out a couple of times. We saw Humanoid making some pretty big yeah. mistakes where he was giving over his life that a lot of the fight setups were not optimal for Mad. And I felt like there was one of those situations where G2 were able to take advantage of their long history, their, their big advantage in terms of experience. Yeah, the experience of the players. Punishing these small yeah. windows, it's something that you, you come to experience playing against a team like G2 a lot, where even the smallest mistake can open a massive wound. But I think for, if you look on the other side of it, Mad Lions had a very good early game. You know, after, at that 10 minute mark, they were 5-0 up. They had about a thousand gold lead. And for a team with four rookies in it, you can take a lot of hope from that coming in to the rest of the split. Of course, it's a very hard, tough start for them. First game against the reigning champions. But if you're a Mad Lions fan, I wouldn't be too dismayed by this performance. Yeah, I think that they showed some promising things. Uh, it was cool seeing what Kazi could do on yeah. the Aphelios first game. You can see that if you misstep against this champion, it can do a lot of damage. The cool combos that were available, there was Severum uh, plus the Crescendum, yeah. and it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed seeing it. I hope we get to see more throughout the day. So do I. For your Kia player of the game, guys, you can go on over to at LOL Esports on Twitter and vote Wonder Perks or Caps. I think Caps wants it. He's looking at me. 9, greedily. 0, and 12. Yeah, he but he's had playing Senna. 100% kill participation. Okay, yeah, give it to him. <laughs> give it to him. He definitely deserved it. After the break, Caps is going to tell us all about his first game in the bot lane. We'll also learn more about Vitality's new lineup as they face off against SK Gaming.